So it's about 1.5. 1.5 million. 1.5 million dollars. Yes. Of waste we created. What'd you say? Yeah, when we convert all of that into retail value. Holy. I know what you're thinking. What the F did Crave Beauty do wrong? Please hold that thought because I'm gonna explain everything throughout this entire video and it's gonna be worth it. But before we begin, I do have a question for you. When you think about the beauty industry waste, what comes to your mind? Probably this or this or similar to how these people think. Uh, packaging. Packaging and packaging too. And that's true, beauty does have a waste problem, but it's not just packaging. Over the years of running my own company, I realized that packaging is only one part of the bigger problem. And no one really likes to talk about what goes behind the scenes and the hidden waste of this entire industry. And that includes all the waste that gets generated throughout the entire product development, production, transportation, any kind of back-end up operations and sales and all that. It's almost like a dirty secret where if you keep your lips sealed as an industry insider, the waste doesn't exist. But today I'm peeling back the curtains and opening that closed doors for you. Here's a question. Where do all those clothes end up? The U.S. leads the world in exporting used textiles. More than one and a half billion pounds are shipped out of the country every year. Burning and destroying clothes. All the apples are on the ground. Very few of them are on the trees. What do you do with the, all these apples on the ground? And he was like, well, those can't really be sold to stores. So if, and if we can't sell them to our neighbors or anything like that, we'll toss them. I know these are examples from other industries, but any product businesses would definitely agree that this is a common issue to them. And that includes us. What do you think this is? This entire pile is hundreds and hundreds of units of Great Barrier Relief packaging in 100% glass. With any packaging changes, it is best practice to run a test production. And especially with this inner bottle silicone insert that we were trying and testing, we were one of their very first clients, meaning that there were a lot of risks. So it's best to minimize and de-risk by running an actual pilot production. However, that left us with this glorious amount of great barrier reliefs that we can't really sell or use. But stay tuned on how we're gonna utilize that. This is our new product that was never planned. All right, so some of you guys know that we did renovate our best-selling cleanser, Mata Empire Hydrated Cleanser, this year. Let me actually put this down. Because we didn't want to disappoint the original customers who've been loving and enjoying this cleanser, we actually went through like a long process of different pilot productions and manufacturing process to make sure that we are leaving all the best traits that people love about, but make sure that it's more hydrating and more biodegradable. And after getting one pilot production right, that's when we had the confidence to hit go and the green light to go into a mass production which went wrong. The entire batch that came out of the mass production, it was... I really wanted to cry. It didn't live up to our standards, so we had to reject it. And then we were left with these like 10 bathtubs worth of cleanser. So we had two options. One, throw it away. Two, do something about it. And that is how this limited edition matcha hemp body wash was born out of nowhere. We reworked the entire bulk, added ingredients, tweaked the formula a little bit and consistency a little bit, make sure it's more like lathery and sudsy so that it's more body wash-y. And we're actually selling this at eight dollars without any margin it only includes all the cost of goods packaging freight forwarding cost transportation pick and pack fulfillment fee i hope this goes to someone who would use it we tried to minimize our footprint in terms of the packaging material perspective so instead of going for a bottle packaging we opted for this refillable pouch wait but there's more makeup rewind this was one of the hardest products to launch to date. It had the biggest discrepancy from what we have approved in the lab and what it actually came out in the entire production. Like, seriously. 
because we were trying to achieve this jiggly jelly oil texture that was never tried before in that lab and that manufacturer we had to run multiple batches of pilot productions until we got the texture exactly right that also meant that we rejected a lot of batches of pilot productions so that's why we're opening up our warehouse to actually sell the pilot version at a 50% discounted price the ingredient list is the same the product is as efficacious as the regular version it's just the texture that is slightly more fluid so that's about 1.5 million dollars worth in retail value it is a lot of waste too we don't deny that and that's why we want to normalize talking about this and i know that this is not a unique issue to create beauty only production screw ups happen pilot productions almost necessary on top of that there are excess inventory issues too so first I'm talking to the co-founder and CEO of Blueland, Sarah Page Yu, whose mission is to end single-use plastic usage in household home essentials and make eco-living much of an easier option for everybody. You might have come across the beautiful cleaning tablets that easily dissolves in water at one of your friends' houses or on social media. I asked Sarah what waste problem that they're experiencing at Blueland behind the scenes. Yeah, there is a lot of waste that consumers don't see, I mean, across the supply chain. So for example, you know, like our bottles are shipped to us from our manufacturers in Asia. And typically, you know, they'd be wrapped in a lot of plastic. You know, now we have everything shipped to us completely plastic free using paper. I would say the biggest buckets of product waste for us includes returns, especially returns of used products, damaged products. And the last bucket for us is excess inventory. You know, 2022 or this year started with major supply chain delays. And I think for those of you that were following on the news, like especially the first three months of this year, there were just like endless lines at the seaports. So like many, we responded to what was happening at the beginning of the year by stocking up on inventory and really increasing our days on hand of inventory in the warehouse house. But now, you know, supply chain timelines have normalized, which is, you know, great news. But, you know, we are definitely working to get back to our sort of like normal preferred inventory levels. So we're not taking up excess storage space, you know, paying excess fees to store all this inventory. Besides what Sarah has shared, excess inventory issues can happen when a company goes through a whole packaging switch. That really happened with us at Creafiti when we were doing a whole rebranding last year. It was very hard for us to have that very clean transition with the old inventories and new inventories. So what we did was we sold our old inventories at a discounted price, donated some, which a lot of other brands do. But worst case scenario, old inventories can also go into landfill. We also do have production batches sometimes that aren't perfect. For example, recently we had a production run where the tablets were too fat and our tablets need to be a certain size because they need to get through the, the mouth of the bottle. And so that was an example of a type of product that we included in the Misfit sale. We provide a lot of education. When we're talking about the hidden waste problem of all industries, we also need to know what happens to all the products that we return as customers back to the retailers. When someone returns something, even if it's not used. Yep. Beauty product returns or any product return in general is becoming a really big problem. We have spoken to over 120 retailers and over half of them have said that they are uh, disposing of over 25% of their customer returns. Don't really inspect every single item and say, is this resellable, is it not? What level of effort would it take to get this back into a resellable condition? And that's why companies take kind of the easy route out and just say, well, let's just destroy this. Return products in the beauty industry are rarely reused or resold due to health regulations causing waste in the transportation process, as well as in the product and packaging. Return beauty products to large retailers may be emptied or purposefully damaged to prevent dumpster divers. But wow. And according to the Vogue business article called Beauty Has a Waste Problem and It's Not Packaging that was written by Rachel Kernansky, it says waste is generated by formula testers, unsold or returned products, and items that expire in warehouses or on store shelves. With retailers sending unsold inventory back to brands, expired or discontinued products being sent to the landfill, and unused products sitting in customers' homes, it's impossible to pinpoint the true numbers of the beauty industry's waste. 
Recently, I came across this email that was sent from Gia. Gia wasn't meant to be wasted. This is basically scratch damaged labels that they can't really sell to the retailers, but the product inside is perfectly fine. So they're doing a scratch sale. So. What do we do now? Well, first you can like this video because it doesn't cost you a dime. And second, you can share this video to bring more awareness to this hidden waste problem of the industry. And third, let's actually hear from other people on what we should be doing. I talked to another beauty industry expert, Melanie Bender, who was the president of Verse Skincare and is now the CEO of Haley Bieber Skincare Line Road. She actually holds a degree in sustainability where she studied climate change and coral reef ecosystem. She's also the mastermind behind Code Red for Climate rallying and collecting over 200 beauty brands to urge the U.S. Congress to act on climate change. When we step back and really think about waste in terms of overconsumption, it really changes the nature of how we identify and prioritize impact. I think the single greatest thing that we can do as, as brands are bring our stakeholders on board with these missions. You know, for a brand that is venture capital backed, the biggest reason for existence is around growth of that bottom line. In in order to help the brand teams and the decision makers prioritize other things like less impact, we have to be brought into that from that highest level. So I think mm -hmm. first, you know, having those discussions with your board, with your investors, your leadership team, and um, to help them understand why this is important to you, to your consumers, to the future of the business, that's really the most important jumping off point. From there, I think it's all the things that we know, but are painful to think about the pushes around newness and, you know, always a, a next product launch that's really really tough because it creates this cycle of newer better onto the next so before you go out and buy a new moisturizer finish the one that you have when you are making a choice to purchase look for brands that do those best practices that measure that are transparent about their measurements that talk about solutions like this has x percent fewer emissions associated x percent less waste versus taking a marketing approach to sustainability as melanie pointed out overconsumption and hyperconsumption consumerism itself can be definitely detrimental to fueling more unnecessary waste problem. And it is important for companies to work from top to bottom, from shareholders to stakeholders, in order to really be aligned on just producing products more intentionally, more sustainably, and in a way that doesn't create more unnecessary demands, which is a huge problem in a lot of product-based companies. And here's what Sarah from Blue Land has to say about what we can do from a company standpoint, a customer customer standpoint and the regulation perspective. I mean, so many thoughts here. From a company perspective, you know, I think we would really encourage companies to like measure their waste because you really can't improve what what you don't measure. And I think for us, having made that commitment to having a zero waste, uh, warehouse and fulfillment operations has forced us to measure that because there's some pain associated with that waste versus just like throwing it away or or God forbid, like burning it, I think that's forced us to really be focused on then reducing that amount. I think more education of customers and being more transparent, I think could be helpful. I think the response to the Misfit sale was overwhelmingly positive for us, I think would encourage other companies to not shy away from, you know, being transparent about mistakes that have been made. And then as a customer, you know, just being more open to buying products that others may not want. If you see like a Blue Land box at retail that's like crinkled and you don't care, like, please buy that box. Another favorite example of mine is like single bananas, like because people tend to buy in bunches Wait, okay. Yeah, and so there's like all these at the end, like so many of these single bananas that are perfectly fine, but people just are biased against single bananas. From an industry or government perspective, mm -hmm. what could really help move the consumer products industry forward is attaching a price to waste. So I think it's been really interesting. I think this country has been finally moving kind of in the right direction. Um, in California, just passed a really large um, extended producer responsibility law, which will start, you know, taxing yeah. businesses for, you know, eventually not producing, you know, more products in packaging that's recyclable or reusable or, or compostable. So we started this entire project because we were seeing how much waste that we're getting wasted behind the scenes and no one's really talking about it. As Sarah and Melanie have pointed out, 
out. What you can't measure, you can't really do anything about. So track your progress, measure, quantify for much that is possible within your bandwidth. I hope more companies and especially retailers can be a little bit more open and transparent about the waste that goes behind the scenes so that it's less of a hidden problem and for governments and policies and regulations i hope there's an initiative where they do mandate individuals companies and everyone to pay as you trash i think that's a really good place to start if you are in new york city this you'll see it and meet it and touch it in real life because we're gonna do a garage sale i'll leave all the details down below in the description box but thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll talk to you guys later bye